Welcome back to ESPR Boxing's YouTube channel. Delighted, as always, to be joined by Paul and Owen. This is the big fight breakdown for the light heavyweight contest between Josh Boatsy and Dennis Zee's taking place at the O2 Arena in London on October 21st. Gents, be good to be joined by both of you. We all love a, domestic, a big domestic clash. This is one of those. Um, really interesting to get some opinions flying about. Um, two guys who are kind of are friends and they're putting that kind of friendship to one side and... Yeah, it's a really strong division that we've got in the UK, the light heavyweight division. And um, looking forward to seeing, looking forward to the fight and looking forward to getting your opinions on it as well. Owen, I'll start with you. You at Joshua Boatsy's last fight. Um, not the most entertaining fight in, in in Birmingham against Powell Stepian. Um, how would you sum up Boatsy's career so far as a professional? Obviously, he was at the, um, the 2016 Olympics, got a bronze medal. So he's been a pro for, for a few years now, 17 and 0. Don't really feel like he's really been in trouble. I wouldn't say he's had a couple of close fights. That that Craig Richards fight was really sticks out. Um, but yeah, your thoughts on his career so far as a pro? Pretty underwhelming, to be fair. Um, like you say, after is the he got the medal in the Olympics, I think where Joe Cordina is at is where everyone expected Buatsi to be at. Um I think the the two of them were sort of Britain's next big hopes and the majority of people I know had Buatsi to be the next one. Um he hasn't had he hasn't got that big name yet on his record. I mean Dan Aziz is, is a decent name to have on it, but so far, yeah, you look at his record, what is his best win? Craig Richards or or Bolotniks? Um for the the potential he showed at this stage of his career. I'd have expected him to have been looking at unification fights, not still looking towards your, your big domestic dust up. So I'm not saying he, he's been terrible, but I, I'd just say at this stage of his career, I, I would have expected more to be, to be quite honest. Yeah, I, th I think that's, I think that's fair. I think he was, I remember kind of Matchroom made a big deal out of signing him when he turned pro and, the years have gone by, and I think look, he's had a couple of injuries, which happen. Obviously, there was COVID. Um, it's just gotten to the point now where he is thirty years old now, and I just I want to know how how good is how good is this guy? Um, I think he's in a tough any light heavyweight outside of Bivol and Baturbiev is in a tough position because those two guys are elite fighters, and anyone else to kind of defeat one of them, you're going to have to really be a special fighter to do that. Um, Paul. What are your what are your thoughts on Josh Boatsy so far? Yeah, I think I think it's totally fair to say that he's underwhelmed somewhat. Um, when you look at the crop that turned pro after the Rio twenty sixteen Olympics, you know your Acolis, as as Owen said, your Cordinas. The, the most hype was about Joshua Boatsy out of them all, and I think it was rightly so, judging how he performed at the Olympics and everything. And there was quite a lot of hype around him, and he's probably been the one that has underperformed the most I'd say and underwhelmed you look at Okole's being a world champion Joe Cordina world champion um, George Kelly obviously not world champion but had some had some big fights not even like um, boatsy has been in any big big fights as such as well Um, so yeah underwhelmed so somewhat so far in my opinion but at the same time he's undefeated he's got a good record he does have a couple of good names on there so I don't think it's all negative. I just think we probably thought he would have been a little bit further ahead of where he actually is, to be quite honest with you. Um, you know, he might he may well win this fight and go on to great things, but as of you know, his 17 pro fights so far, I'd say he's definitely slightly underwhelmed. Yeah, I think the three of us are in agreement then. I think that topped off by the last fight, which just wasn't a very entertaining fight. Um, I think Boatsy needed a big fight next to kind of get people interested. If he was to fight another foreign fight that a lot of us hadn't heard of, I just think interest would be pretty, yeah, interest would be pretty limited, if I'm honest. So he kind of needs this big fight against Josh Boatsy, against Dan Aziz, sorry. Um, speaking of Dan Aziz, Paul, how, how can he win this this fight? Um, undefeated as well as Josh Boatsy. Um, he's 20, yeah, 20, you know, 13 stoppages. It's a funny one when two undefeated fighters face each other because no one's shown how to beat either of them. Um, so it's a strange one, but 
if Dan and Caesar's to win this fight, how do you envisage it happening? Um, oh, it's a tricky question to answer. I think, to be honest with you, mate, I think he has to. You know, you just look at the size and stature of both men, and he's a smaller man, um, out of the two. So I think that you know that kind of leads on to thinking that he might have to get on the inside and beat Boatsy, you know, on the inside. But in saying that, that doesn't really always work that way. He could out jab him and out work him. I think I think work rate for Dan Aziz, it will be key here. Um over Josh Boatsy, I think when, you know, in the past when we have seen Boatsy in close enough fights, like, you know, the Craig Richards fight was pretty close and Richards made mm. um Boatsy work. Obviously Boatsy came through that and won in the end. Um, but there were there were spells there where Craig Richards was certainly um on top. That's the one that springs to mind most. So I think if you're Dan Aziz, you look at that and see how Josh Boatsy reacts to you know when he gets put on him a wee bit. He covers up. Does he cover up too high? Does he leave some? Does he leave some space there to the body that Dan Aziz can exploit? Things like that. I think you need to be looking at if you're if you're Dan Aziz. And saying that Dan Aziz though is the one that kind of comes in with probably the better wins and the more pedigree. So. People might think that he has more ways of winning than um, Joshua Buatzi. Both have 13 stoppages, obviously, so can he win by knockout? Remains to be seen, but yeah, mate, if I'm Dan Aziz and I'm on um, Dan Aziz's team, I think you kind of got to get in close and make Buatzi work really hard um, every minute of every round. But, you know, I think Dan Aziz is a bit of an engine. I know Buatzi's obviously, they're both super fit, but I think Dan Aziz needs to make him work really hard. And make, if he is, if Buatzi is going to win rounds, well, Aziz is going to need to make him really, really work for them. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I really enjoyed the Josh Boatsy Craig Richards fight last year. I actually it wasn't kind of like a look was not like a fight of the year, but actually was a really competitive fight and a lot of the rounds Boatsy did just enough to win the rounds. I'm not saying he kind of nicked rounds, but part of that was work rate and activity and he did that consistently through the fight and I thought that was really that was really impressive. Um Owen what do you yeah how do you see how do you see Denizzi's winning this fight I think I, I tend to agree with what Paul said I think it is a really tricky one especially judging obviously like say I was at Denizzi, um sorry Joshua Boatsy's last fight against Powell Stepian and he he didn't get out of third gear really he just sort of did what he needed to do it was a fight that I personally thought Joshua Boatsy it was a chance for him to put a show on show people what he can do show how good he is, how what different styles he can fight. And almost a case of, I don't want to be too harsh on, on his opponent, but I felt it was a fight where he could press the button and stop him when he sort of felt like it. Um, so I think it's really hard to, to judge on what Joshua Boatsy is going to be like. But I think, like Paul said, Boatsy is quite deceivingly big. I mean, I know obviously it's, it's quite a big weight, but when I actually seen Boatsy in person, I was surprised. I thought Aziz would be the bigger man, but when I actually seen them in person, I think getting on the inside would be the, the best bet for, for Dan Aziz. And to be honest, I think it's just pressure. I think if he gets on the front foot and stands on Buatsi's toes and forces the fight how Dan Aziz wants it, I think that's how he can win. Because like we say, without being harsh on Buatsi, he can fight at range. He's quite long and gangly. So I think if Dan Aziz can get on the inside, he, it defo makes it an interesting fight. Yeah, absolutely. Look, look, I'm um, look. I'm really looking forward to it. Should be a good fight. Should be should be really competitive. Um, and yeah, we will move on to predictions shortly. But yeah, I'm 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 really looking forward to it. Not not too long to go now until until fight night. Um, bit of an outside topic, gents. Want to get your opinion on like the domestic scene and how that compares to the world scene at light heavyweight at the moment. Um, got look, as I mentioned earlier in the call, got some fantastic light heavyweights. Um, in this country. The two fighters we're talking about today, Callum Smith is obviously now fighting Baturbiev in January, um, and Anthony Yard has, re has re re recently fought and is we're awaiting news on him if he's supposed to be having a big fight in December, and we'll see what that what that actually means. He obviously fought Baturbiev earlier this year, but um, and um, yeah, came up short, but yeah, still did still did really well. Um, the question is, are all of those four guys top ten light heavyweights? Um, I think light heavyweight division, you've got a lot of good fighters. You've got a lot of fighters who perhaps haven't got massive profiles. Um, obviously, the Terbia and Bivol have to be in the top 10, that have to be in the top two, really, don't they? Um, and yeah, interested to see if it's a yes or a no from you guys. 
um Owen we'll stick with we'll stick with you are those four British light heavyweights all um all, all top 10 for you I'd say so yeah I think light heavyweight reminds me of heavyweight in, in an aspect of you've got the two elite in um obviously Bivol and Baterbiev then you've got a cluster of good top level fighters behind them um you know you've got the likes of Glavaki and um, Ramirez but then I think after that to be honest, I think it'd be harsh not to, because I actually had a look through the rankings and John Pascal is actually still ranked within the IBF. So I think to say the four the four British names that we've mentioned aren't in the top 10 would be quite harsh. I think Callum Smith probably belongs in the same sort of breath as your Bivols, Baterbiev, definitely your Glavakis, etc. So he, he's definitely up there. I think Buatsi and Aziz, the winner of this, is looking at a huge, huge fight. And even the loser of it, it depending on how competitive it is, they're still looking at another major fight. Yard is the tough one for me. And I think it's purely because of the landscape of the light heavyweight division. I'd put him in there because I think, like we spoke about before, Elliot, I think Anthony Yard has sort of four fighters that are sort of a level below him. Then he's gone straight into the elite level. Um, so obviously when he's gone in, not really fought anyone of major substance, gone in with... Um, you know, like you say, when he got beat by Baterbiev, um, it's 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 a really tough one, I think, because there's quite a big gap between the names. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot when he fought Kovalev as well. So I'd say they are. Um, I'd say Smith is the best of the four, undoubtedly. Um, but yeah, I'd I'd personally put them in, and especially seeing John Pascal still rank. So I think it'd be harsh to not put them in there. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I think just um could see some more additions to that division as well with the likes of Caleb Plant, David Benavidez, um, possibly stepping up from super middleweight as well. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, Paul, what are you, what are your thoughts on this question? Yeah, mate, I completely concur with more or less everything Owen said there. I have all four in my top 10. You look at outside of the champions, uh, potentially your, you know, Ramirez and Joe Smith who are fighting, obviously. Um, sorry, who've who've who fought there? Um, you know they're probably the top. Bivol and Baturbi are on their own pedestal. Then you've kind of got the next fringe, where you've got your Joe Smiths, your Gilberto Ramirez, and I put Callum Smith there personally. Um, and then below that, I think you've got the likes of Yard, and uh, both of the two Z's and Boatsi. You've got maybe um Gavodstick as well as on the second kind of level because he obviously had that win. He came back there and beat Belotniks and he was up on the cards against Paterbiev a few years back when before he got stopped. So kinda of have to put him up there. I know he's getting on, but he's probably still up there. And then it's just kind of a few coming through your man, Rivera. Um, the American. He looks like he's I think his only defeat. Um he's only got one defeat in his record. Um, but he looks like kind of fringe top ten and um the Russian eleven or no. He's is Milov. He's only um, obviously only coming through and every time there's like a Russian or Kazakhstani or someone you know there's an Eastern European fighter coming through you got, you better be on your you better be warned because um, they always seem to have some top level fighters in each division um, but yeah mate, for me I think I have all four of them in the top 10 Callum Smith I agree with the one I think he's probably the best of them all I think that's only fair given he was a world champion um, the, the weight division below um, and then yeah I think you've kind of got your yard Boatsy and Aziz are you know, you put those three um, in, in a round robin and maybe they all beat each other. It's one of those when I kind of have them all on a similar level. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I'd agree with you guys. I think the only thing I'd add is that I hope that we just see more domestic clashes like this because um, I'd love to see the winner of this, you know, possibly fight Callum Smith next year or possibly fight Anthony Yard. Um, but like, I'm sure lots of people would disagree over kind of out of those four who are, who are the best one to four. And we're going to find out well, part of that question on 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 October twenty first, but yeah, I think yeah, it's really interesting. But look, it's just good to have such kind of a a thriving yeah a, a thriving scene in 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 the UK. And not forgetting Craig Craig Richards, another good fighter, Lyndon Arthur. Um, maybe not the best performance last time out, but still like a competitor in the in in the light heavyweight division. Those two are, I think, a lot of people would say top fifteen, possibly and possibly getting into that top ten as well. So plenty of other fights to be made. Um. Gents, we'll wrap things up now. Interested to get some predictions here. Uh, Josh Bratzi versus Dan Aziz, October 21st. Paul, at the moment, who is your prediction? 
Yeah, mate, I'm main you reaction video to this when it first got announced, and I said Boatsy, and I'm still sticking with Boatsy. I think that despite as he mentally, I I favour Joshua Boatsy in more or less every department. I think he's got more power as well. I think he's a more skillful fighter, um, and has kind of more more. He's he's got kind of got more tools. Um, I think he's kind of got more um strings to his bow, if you like. So I, I'm still I'm still heading towards Joshua Boatsy. Method of victory, I'd probably lean towards points, to be honest with you. But mm -hmm. stoppage wouldn't surprise me, but I'd probably lean towards um, Boatsy on points right now. Fantastic. And if Boatsy, a fight I'd really like to see if Boatsy wins this is that fight against Anthony Yard. We've been talking about that for... So one of these fights mm -hmm. now we might never see. We might see it when one of them posts both, both of them is is past their best. We're really good at we're really good at that in this sport, aren't we, gents? Um who <laughs> would win that fight, Paul? Josh Boetz against Anthony Yards early 2024. Who would win? Man, it's a tough one. You've really put me under pressure there. Uh it all depends on how he gets on on October 23rd. But if Boatsy wins, for example, and he kind of my prediction comes true. I'd favour Boatsy to beat Yard, to be quite honest with you. Sure, we shall see. We won't get ahead of ourselves. Um, Owen, are you agreeing with Paul? Are you disagreeing with Paul? What's your prediction? Um, When it first got announced, I disagreed with him. I did sort of lean towards Dan Aziz, but I've sat, I've briefly sort of sat and watched some highlights of their previous fights, and they'll do it a lot more when it when the fight sort of, when we're on the eve of it. I'm going to go with Buatsi points. Like I say, I do think when, from what I've seen, he does do pretty much, like I say, every department better. And I think if, like I say, I think if Aziz can be kept at length, I think if he can get his jab going nice and early, um, if he can dictate the pace, if he can dictate the style of the fight, then I, I think he, he'll beat him on points. I personally don't see either of them stopping each other. Um, I don't think... The fight will go to to a sort of an aspect of where they're slugging for each other. Um, obviously, they've both got a decent amount of knockouts on their record. So if one of them gets caught, then they're both big blokes. But I do see it being a, a points victory for Joshua Boatsy. Fantastic. 2-0 to Boatsy. And one word answer, Owen. Boatsy versus Yars, early 2024. Who do you think would win? Boatsy. Points. Fantastic. Um. To round things off, I am going to disagree with both of you. Um, I'm going for Dan Aziz to win this fight. The word I would use to explain that prediction is momentum and consistency. Aziz has been very active the last couple of years. I think he's looked very good. At times, perhaps he hasn't looked so good. I think he's just been active as well. And I just think timing is important in this sport. And I just feel like Aziz... It's important this time. One thing I'll add is I think this will go the distance as well. And I think it will be close. It will be a close fight. It's not going to, I don't think it's going to be a one sided fight to, to anyone. Um, but yeah, I've just, that's my gut feeling. So I'm going to go with that at the moment. It's easy to beat Boatsy on points. Gents, be really good to break this, this down with both of you. Um, and we will see what happens on October 21st. Plenty more content to come. Please do check out the rest of our content on this channel. And I will speak to both of you again soon. Thanks, mate. Really enjoyed that. As usual, always, mate.